Hello everyone, welcome to this new Talky Pony video. So today we're gonna talk about the last Monty Dojo, which was the 32 and which was called Excore Palette. So this challenge is mainly called in Python and I've been developed by myself. Today we're gonna talk about Europe-based XXA. As usual, we're firstly gonna have a look to the settings port of this challenge. As you can see, into slash TMP slash flag dog txt, there is the flag we're gonna try to exfiltrate during this challenge. And just after, you can see into the XML further a file called sample.xml containing a sample of that I will be able to use in the challenge. So you can see some colors definition with some exclusional values. After that, you can see a config.tdd file which is containing a parameter entity called persons config underscore x. For my context, in this challenge, I really wanted to showcase um, an XXA I discovered in Bagwin T. Uh, and I've been a new based one exactly as this challenge. And I really wanted to do it the more realistic as possible. So I will explain after that why I did that and what it represents. So in the main part of the challenge, you can see a definition of the parser called parse underscore palette, which is defined with HV, which is used by LXML in our case with Python. So you can see that load entity and resource entity are defined with true. This is super interesting because we are gonna be able to load some entities and to resolve entities and I this way have an XXA. After that, you can see a condition trying to parse only X color with a regex. This regex is matching string beginning with hashtag 0 to 9, A to F, lower and uppercase, and a line to 3 to 6. After that, there is nothing really useful for the solving of this challenge. We can see that there is a try and an accept. So exception will be contained into the parse underscore tax uh, variable. Um, and at the end you can see that there is a print of the template render which basically display all the html etc and in two you can see as an output the parser and score text which we contain our error so yeah it will let you guess that in our case we're gonna try to have an error base xxa so to be quick it's not possible to bypass the regex so we're not gonna try to do it because we can't in this challenge, we know that we have the possibility to call a parameter entity defined into the config.dd file, so we're gonna dig with that. So for this challenge, we're gonna break down the payload into that step by step. I wanted to let you know that this challenge have been a little bit different than usual because I caught it this challenge a few times ago, and when we decided to realize it, I realized that the challenge wasn't working. So I had to look to the LXML fix and last patch notes and I discovered why. So I had to modify a bit this challenge and in this video we're gonna talk about two uh, solutions because both were intended and that's why I decided to talk about the two differences into uh, our last write-up on yesweheart.com so I will recommend you to have a look if you want to read it because it's really nice and it's with some really good reports from others. And yeah, by the way, if you want to see your uh, reports into our website, uh, just feel free to do the dash out with a really nice. And if your reports is one of the best, we can decide to visually add it into our website. So we're gonna break down step by step this payload. We first load the local config.dd file and yeah, as you understood, this is super interesting and critical in our case because inside config.dd there is a reference to a non-defined parameters entity uh, which is called uh, percent config underscore x and by defining a uh, percent uh, config underscore x into our payload before including the dd we overwrite it with our malicious contents after that we're gonna overwrite config underscore x uh, to inject our chain. So here we define person config underscore x and anything inside will be evaluated as entity code when the local entity is parsed. Inside this entity we declare person flag which lot slash tmp slash flag dot txt into a parameter entity. After that we are gonna create a near based exfiltration primitive. So this will define another parameter's entity is called person evil, which itself defined person error as you can see. 
So yeah, you can see that there is some anchoring and double anchoring into this payload and we will explain why to step through. So person error points to a fake file path that contain our flag values. So as you can guess now, when the XML person try to fetch this invalid path, it will trigger a fatal error in which the whistle's hero high will be included. And yeah, so that's how the exploitation is working. And after, we need to force the evaluation into the correct order. So we basically expand person's evil immediately. So that person error is created before the local DDD is processed. And to finish, we need to trigger the DDD enclose. And so we finally include the actual uh, path slash TMP XML config .edd, and when the parser anchors a uh, person uh, config underscore x, it will substitute our monster definition, which in turn execute the wall chain. And yeah, so as I told and as you can tell, there is some double coding. And yeah, that's because parameters and TDs are processed in multiple passes. So to prevent parameter expansion or any issues, uh, we directly use executing as you may be understood I really wanted to recreate um, the case in which you have an error basic 6a and in which you need to use a local DDD because you can't use your because for example uh, you don't have any internet access um, into your contacts so you have to use some local ones Cosecure is a company that did a cool works um, to discover automatically some local DDDs to use them for, for example, error-based XXA as our case, or some any kind of XXA in which you don't have the possibility to load DDD from, uh, for example, your website because you don't have any internet access, etc. There is by design in a lot of OS um, some DDDs that you can call. So it depends of the OS, it depends of its if it's Debian, Ubuntu, uh, Windows, Linux, etc. With the tool we created, you have the possibility from a snapshot to typically identify DDDs on the file system and to call them. That's really cool because if you have the possibility to fingerprint um, which OS is behind, uh, you can typically do a snapshot and using like that. Or if you don't know, you can directly use the list they created for Windows and Linux. A lot of tools have some DDDs that you can call with parameters and DDDs into, like Nmap for example. And yeah, so as I told you previously, um, this challenge is a little bit different than usual because it has been uh, caught it some time ago. And when we decided to publish it, I realized that, that the challenge wasn't working, so I had to look to the last uh, fix and patch note of AlexML and I discovered that a really cool uh, researcher called Anatoly did some good works. So yeah, he discovered a very interesting uh, tricks to bypass um, result for TDs and to have XXA with parameters on TDs. So as I explained into AlexMLLib from 5.0.0, XXA will not be possible because you need to have result for TDs. So as you saw in the challenge, resolve entities is defined to true, but in this case, you didn't even need to have resolve entity to do it. So there is a super basic XXA as you can see, trying to load the etc passable u file, and after that you can see the definition of the parser um, without any uh, resolve entities in two. And so in the case uh, he reported, uh, he had the possibility with parameters entity to do some XXA without any resolve quantity to true. Honestly, I've been a little bit surprised because XML doesn't even have a CVA and they say that it's because libxml2 that is used for LXML was updated so it was why this issue I've been here. But Anatoly confirmed that all images of Python uh, was vulnerable uh, by directly using pipe install LXML. And that's honestly crazy because it literally affected most of the latest Python Docker images. So both versions were valid and it's really interesting because it showcases that with some outdated version you can do a lot of things like that. So yeah, so as you can see both versions are valid and this is super cool to see some different um, 
solution for uh, a challenge and yeah so you had a big hint because as you can see into the import i had to import the previous version of lxml and by having a look to the patch note of lxml you can find um this bug report from anatoly so it got the hints you can discover some xxa in backbone t uh, with different way so in the way of if you can give directly uh, on xml file but you have some different kind of xxa and yeah, I caught an XXA in Backbone T by this way, so it's super interesting to test every time. So what you can do is trying to change the content type of the request. For example, if you have a post request with inside a JSON body, you can try to change the content type to application XML and change the content uh, from JSON to XML. You can do it online, there is a lot of tools to do it. And you can try to see how the API or just how the website is answering if you have some errors. And uh, yeah, it could be super interesting too. So it's all for today. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any kind of recommendation, feel free to comment, press the button like and subscribe. See ya!